In the question corner of volume 105, the author of One Piece dropped a bombshell about Zoro's lineage. Because we finally get confirmation that Zoro is in fact related to the sword god Ryuma that he fought back on Thriller Bark. We also finally learn the identity of Zoro's long lost parents and even some shocking clues that not just one, but two of the current admirals might be part of Zoro's extended family. Starting with Zoro's relation to Ryuma. Because when you look at the family tree, you can see that Zoro got his name Roronoa from his grandfather and it was actually his grandmother who is a direct descendant of Ryuma and the Shimotsuki clan of Wano. In case you didn't know, we first learn about Ryuma on the zombie island thriller bark. During the final battle, Zoro duels and defeats the animated corpse of the long dead legendary samurai. And little did we know that he was actually fighting his ancient ancestor, which may explain why Ryuma decided to give Zoro his famous sword Shusui after being defeated. And while eventually Zoro returned this blade during the Wano arc, now that we know that Shusui belonged to Zoro's ancestor, we would like to see him reclaim the famous blade before the end of the story. But this is only the beginning of this ridiculous family tree. We already knew that 55 years before the current storyline, a single ship escaped the samurai country of Wano with 25 people on board. That's because the borders of Wano were always close. Now, eventually this ship landed at a small village in the East Blue where the samurai of Wano saved the village from bandits. This village then later became known as Shimotsuke village, the same place where Zoro then and learned how to fight with a sword. And it is here where the family tree starts branching out. On this ship was Shimotsuke Kozaburu, who we first learned about from Kozuki Odin's father back in chapter 955. He was a famous swordsmith who crafted two of Zoro's previous swords, the Warui Chimonji and Enma. We also recently learned that he was also somewhat of a mentor to Zoro as we see in the flashback from chapter 1033 when he gives Zoro two of his first actual swords that he then used to challenge Kuina. Zoro's first rival and the person that he made a promise with to become the greatest swordsman in the world. And this Shimosuke Kozaburu then married a girl from the village and became the father of Koshiro who was the master of the dojo where Zoro trained. Koshiro then again later married someone else and became the father of Kuina. But with this new information from the question corner as you can see right here we learned that Zoro and Kuina were actually both a part of the Shimosuke family tree. though whether they're directly related as cousins or something or more distantly related is still unknown. Which takes us back to Zoro's direct lineage, which is the most interesting part as it gives us some incredibly juicy clues about Zoro's future. And you won't believe what other powerhouses in the One Piece world might actually be a part of Zoro's family. But before we can get into those juicy bits here, I wanna mention that while it is incredibly exciting to learn more about Zoro's past, it is equally disappointing for me that we're not learning about all of this in the main story. I mean, really, how many opportunities were there during Wano's where you could have shown this same information, but for whatever reason, Ichiro Oda decided not to. It's possible that he thought it just wasn't important enough, or maybe it was so important that he wanted to spend time on it that he just didn't have, so it was eventually just cut in the prolonged chaos of Wano. Whatever the actual reason is, remember that Sanji got not one, but two backstories, once during the Baratie arc and another one during the Whole Cake Island arc. An entire arc only dedicated to his entire family. So. I for one think that in the four years that we spent in Wano, could have at least gotten like one chapter or so on Zoro's past, even if it's just as a side story. In my personal opinion, it would have made Zoro's role in Wano even more impactful. I mean, just think of scenes like the execution of his relative Shimotsuke Yasuie. With that being said though, let's continue with the family tree because there are actually some insane secrets that we can learn from Zoro's family names. Starting with Zoro's grandmother, Shimotsuke Furiko. Furiko was on the same ship that departed Wano 55 years ago and we're told in the question corner that she is the older sister of this guy, who we first met back in chapter 1024 during Yamato's flashback. And this guy is no one less than the former daimyo of the Ringo region in Wano, Shimotsuke Ushimaru, who for a while were thought was actually Zoro's father. Well, it turns out he was just his great uncle. And we've speculated a lot before on this channel about Zoro's future after the Straw Hats find the One Piece, but since it is now confirmed that Zoro was related to Ushimaru, do you think that future Zoro could return to Wano to reclaim his family's former role as a daimyo? But continuing down the family tree, Zoro's grandmother Furiko married a swordsman from Shimotsuke village in the East Blue named Roronoa Pinzoro. Clearly, Zoro was named after his father, so we might as well call him Junior. And 
we can assume that Pinzoro and Furiko are both dead. Well, keep watching to find out what insane clues we can learn from their names. Next, we have Zoro's father, Arashi. All we know about this man is that he has spiky hair and that he died in a battle against pirates, which makes me wonder if he died protecting the village or if he was a pirate himself. However, Zoro clearly remembers enough about his father to have named an attack after him. Hana Arashi, which we saw when he wielded Soge King and his sword together during the fight on Ems Lobby. Now, Arashi was married to Zoro's mother, Tera, but similarly, all we know is that she was the daughter of thieving bandits and that she died of some illness. Which does seem to be a common fate for Straw Hat characters' mothers, since both Usopp and Sanji's mother also died from illnesses. Could Nami's mother also have suffered the same fate, is what I'm asking here? And with both of his parents dead, that leaves our green-haired swordsman orphaned at the dojo in Shimotsuke village. And while this is all we've gotten so far for the family tree in the questions corner, there is a lot more that we can actually speculate based on the names of Zoro Direct family. Thanks to the One Piece creator Sandman on my all-time favorite platform Twitter, it is clear that Zoro's family names are based off of traditional Japanese dice gambling. Pinzoro, Zoro's grandfather, means to get double ones. Furiko, his grandmother, means a person who rolls the dice. Arashi, Zoro's father, means to get three of the same number. And Terra is a possible connection to Terazeni or Vigorish, which is a fee taken by gambling companies. And we can even see that Zoro himself is quite fond of dice during Wano. In chapter 929, Yasu, who is actually Zoro's relative Shimotsuke Yasuie, claims that Zoro had just won a large sum of money from a dice gambling house. Also, we do know that Zoro does have a tendency to often leave things to chance, as he did back in the sword shop back in Loke Town in chapter 97. But what is really most interesting about this family of dice gamblers is the other character who might also share this connection with the Shimotsuke family. Remember that back on Dressrosa, we are introduced to this blind gambler who turns out to be the Admiral Fujitora. And what is he gambling with? Dice! Yeah, seems like a pretty solid connection. And even beyond this, Fujitora has so many Japanese elements that could be from Wano, like his clothing or his samurai sword. We also know that Fujitora was born 54 years ago, which was after the Shimotsuke ship left Wano, so it would make sense that he's out and about in the world instead of still being stuck inside Wano's borders. We also know that at some point he blinded himself because he had seen too many atrocities, so it could be that one day he returned to Wano, saw all the devastation left by Kaido, and then took the blade to his eyes. And actually, another marine with ties to Wano and possibly the Shimotsuke is Sentomaru, the personal bodyguard of Dr. Vegapunk. Sentomaru's appearance is heavily based on a Japanese folklore samurai called Sakata no Kintoki, and Sentomaru's name is written in kanji, just like the people of Wano. So it's possible that he could be a descendant of the Shimotsuke or another person who left Wano 55 years ago. And if Sentomaru is from Wano, it is quite likely that another marine is as well. This time, the Admiral Kizaru. Kizaru speaks with a very similar respectful samurai-like and old-fashioned tone, and Sentomaru even refers to him with the honorific title of uncle. And the reveal of Zoro's true family tree of course also added some fuel to the fire surrounding Marine Captain Tashigi. We've long known that she looks strikingly similar to Kuina, and with all that we've learned in this question corner, it is even more likely that she is actually a Shimotsuke. Kuina also could have been another descendant of Kozaburo or another unnamed Shimotsuke from that ship. And if that's the case, does Tashigi even know that she's a descendant of the samurai of Wano? In fact, even Zoro and his childhood friend Kuina seem to be unaware of their famous ancestors. Which kind of makes you wonder why no one ever told them. Were their parents trying to protect them from the marines or even keep Zoro and Kuina from returning to Wano? Well, we don't have the answer to that question quite yet. If you want to learn more about Zoro as a kid and the true origin of his dream to be the strongest swordsman in the world, you can watch this video about every single backstory in one piece right here. Thanks for watching.